Time now to take a look at some of the front pages of some select national dailies to bring you up to date with the stories making the headlines this lovely Wednesday morning. And we kick things off with a look at the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper for today, Wednesday, January 24, 2024. This is what it looks like today. Security agents arrest Fulani leader Botejo, uh, I believe in Nasarawa, for setting up uh, an unregistered, uh, I believe, um, Vigilante group, and uh, there's more on that story on page 10. Tinubu receives Blinken, seeks U.S. support for G20 membership. Police arrest gunrunner with ammunition in Kaduna. And the latest on the Plateau uh, attacks or unrest, eight killed as fresh violence erupts in Plateau. Mosques, churches, houses burnt 24-hour curfew imposed in mongo local government area the military says we have deployed troops to stabilize the situation and you can see pictures there of some of the victims uh, in the recent attacks sacked pdp lawmakers storm plateau assembly apc members stay away uh, page 11 has more on that political quagmire in Plateau State. Unprecedented, I dare add. Bandits kill man, kidnap 16 family members in Niger State. And despite receiving 1.88 trillion naira in two years, nine oil producing states debt skyrocket. So more money, more problems, I guess. And uh, patients groan amid health workers strike in the fct and uh, there's more on that on pages 16 and 19 if you want to take a look at uh, some of those stories to do some further reading the daily independent is next so let's take a look at the front page of the daily independent for today tinubu meets south south monarchs reassures on completing east-west road there shouldn't be special status for lagos according to femi okunu why is he saying that find out more on the pages of the daily independent for today and uh year-round elections putting pressure on neck or, or rather on INEC, uh, according to uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who is the national chairman of the Electoral uh, on Pi. You have a picture there of uh, the president, uh, and you know, in his meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken yesterday at the State House in Abuja. But just above that picture, you have that story of fact sharing 1.127 trillion naira in the month of December last year as a revenue to the federal government and states as well as uh, or rather as allocation to the federal government states and local government areas and below that picture plateau assembly i won't swear in 11 or rather 12 16 appeal court endorse lawmakers according to speaker uh, i think we covered that story I, and i think he's saying listen and he's waiting for the appropriate authorities to do the needful and uh, perhaps if they get their uh, certificate of return and there's a regularization of that, maybe we get to see um, those lawmakers that um, won the election at the appeal court. Federal government receives National Values Charter Blueprint. There are other news stories. The Petroleum Industry Act, President Tinubu vows to strengthen investment in oil gas sector. Four billionaire alleged fraud, EFCC to arraign Obiano today. Federal government seeks collaboration with Hungarian firm, plans aircraft manufacturing. Speakers impeachment not targeted at governor, new Ogun assembly speaker. It was quite dramatic. And uh, you have that story that uh, correlates with the picture. Blinken holds bilateral meeting with Tinubu says US uh, entrepreneurs eager to invest in Nigeria. Well, let's see that happen. 
that is it on the front page of uh, the daily independent up next the guardian newspaper 2025 broadband target dicey as 35 states remain underserved and uh, it's proving to be quite uh, the difficulty there you have only a handful of states that uh, look like they're in a position to do something even though i think the one in the fct uh, leaves much to be desired or you have the FCT there, you have Lagos, unmistakably, Ogun, Oyo, uh, and a handful of other states that uh, are readily uh, in a position for that um, broadband 2025 target. Uh, 12 police net, 12 in police net, I beg your pardon, over NNPP APC supporters clash in Kano. Old corruption, saboteurs, hobble new regime at passport offices so same old problem same old uh, challenge all right we take a look at uh, other stories now on the front page of uh, the news uh, nigerian news direct increase in nmdpra tariffs contributed to hike in price of petrol according to ipman it is a crime to stage your own abduction, Nigerian police warn. FARC allocates 1.13 trillion now to federal government, states, and local government areas for the month of December. BDC's lobby to resume publication of parallel market rates as Nigeria's Naira depreciates further against the dollar. Adelaide approves 1 billion Naira loan scheme, unveils cooperative movement for reform plan. And you have the unmistakable picture there of uh, the one and only Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. All right, uh, let's uh, talk now more about uh, some of the uh, stories making the headlines uh, across some select national dailies this morning. And we have the one and only unmistakable. Uh, former director of news at the voice of nigeria the one and only mr benjamin is joining us this beautiful wednesday morning looking cheaper and uh in a good spirit i hope yes only that i'm worried about the adjectives one and only yeah there's only one and there's only one mr benjamin or is there another one well my own dynasty, they all are Ben Sherman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. It's good morning. Good to see you again. As good morning. Always. Let's Happy start on a not so good uh, note. Plateau, once again, back in the news. We understand that um, Mangu was the point of call now where the government had to impose a 24 hour curfew. But the damage has been done. Eight persons have been confirmed killed. Buildings, churches, mosques have been destroyed, and as usual, lives have been disrupted. Your thoughts? Very unfortunate once again. So politically, all is not well on the plateau. The economy, not well on the plateau. Human relations or relationship, not well on the plateau. And. Uh, I hope there, there are just no plans somewhere to continuously destabilize Plateau and consequently Nigeria. Because if you look at it, the moment that starts, there's always a kind of a spillover to, to, to some, uh, some other local governments, uh, which is not uh, too good. And um, why is it that sanctity of life is no longer something we hold so, so high. And the next thing is, if these are, I mean, what do you call maybe some tribal or farmer hadash clash, why the target of our worship places? Because even by UN convention, if you run to a shrine, you run to a, a church, a mosque, or where you feel people go to worship, you are supposed to be safe. Now, those places are being born. So where is a sanctuary? Where indeed is a sanctuary? And, so, and I think that uh, the governor, having taken that action, that is just the op option he has. Mm. 
what can what else can he do he doesn't control the security apparatus and that is why i support calls that there should be some kind of state police state police it doesn't mean that the governor will just release some people to go and unleash mayhem on innocent people like it's always been said there's just no way a state police working with local government uh, police uh, and the federal uh, i think we'll, we'll get out of, of, of this kind of a, a problem mm -hmm. but when we allow it to linger and linger and linger i mean you see people who should know every time they say we fear governors will unleash now we see criminals unleashing terror on innocent people is that the best situation we'll ever have i think there has to be a rethink and i think that people of note those you call not republic the lawyers bar association why is it that people can't just have private uh, bills on this matter i think it's it, a time has come for for things of this nature so that um plato remains that home of peace and tourism it, it's now the opposite just because some people have skewed plan and are executing it that way i, I think it looks deliberate mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, it shouldn't just be at all right uh, and uh, staying with plateau uh, the state assembly the sacked pdp lawmakers in an unusual move have decided to show up to work even after being sacked now i've never seen this happen usually when you're sacked you don't show up for work uh, saying that uh, you know you're reinstating <laughs> yourself uh, and in this particular fashion they have announced on monday that they were going to show up uh, when the plenary resumes or reconvenes on tuesday at the old government house in joss the plateau state capital uh, however they are taking a particular uh, dimension or perspective that since the governor survived uh, you know his legal battle which is the same bullet that took them down they are they have decided to usurp the powers of the, the or rather uh void the verdict of the appeal court and say we're now going to stick with what the supreme court said first of all your thoughts on this one we know they cannot legally do that but what do you make of this development i think it's like uh, they're engaging in uh, some uh, self-help and um i also think that quickly too the national assembly should be looking at this uh, this um kind of um, gaps these lacunas a uh, situation where it's legal that all cases i mean their own case would not reach the supreme court and once it stops there that is just the limit uh, so there's nothing they can do rather than a kind of uh, lick some wounds uh, but it's a kind of bringing some pressure uh, to, to, to bear uh, so that um, people of note the Judicial National Judicial Council uh, should also take note because why are they saying so doing all of that? Because what is good for Nigeria is good for Niger Republic, mm. is good for Niger State. Mm. Uh, I mean, if the governor survived under the same circumstance, mm. why shouldn't the lawmakers? And, but if therefore the law limits them, they can't go to the Supreme Court and get the same kind of judgment. Mm. Uh, so it says. A so it's lot. a classic judgment was delivered, but justice wasn't done. I, or I, I, I think I think that justice was not done for for these lawmakers, mm. uh, bearing in mind that uh, if you say because B is wearing a red cap, he should pass. B is not wearing. Now, B has passed. So why don't you allow every other person to pass? As you know, uh, so some will say, oh, we're talking about uh, logic. But uh, I mean, sometimes this logic does not, uh, I mean, uh, the law will say, uh, look at what, when you, you talk of housebreaking and burglary. Now this cop, somebody broke into this place and took this cop. And it was in the morning. Then you went and said it was in the evening or in the night. And for that reason, it has become a nullity because of the time. One is housebreaking, the other one is how uh, burglary. Uh, so we shouldn't be talking of logic. If you say PDP did not do their primaries very well, 
therefore give it to APC. The law itself is saying, look, all those things are just for the party for parties. Now, if you look at the position of the of the speaker now, he said, okay, let's see those who have been uh, who are said to to, to, uh, to have won by the by the appeal uh, court of by the tribunal. Where is their own certificate of return? They also have to be issued to those things before they also uh, go to, to report. And that's why you can see the speaker is also saying, if I receive this, has INEC given you uh, any paper? Can you show it to us? You know? And INEC will also tell you it's a, it's a body that goes by what the judge or the court mm. or the panel says. Right. And therefore, it will not contravene uh, what the law has said. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is quite a, a very dramatic one. You know, a, a head scratcher, a very typical head scratcher yeah. in Nigerian uh, political, uh, you know. Uh, it doesn't say well about democracy yeah. in this yeah. country. Exactly. And look at what happened the days of uh, Darie, mm -hmm. where a few people were handpicked and they went and impeached a governor. The crisis continued. Then there was a state of emergency imposed on on, on, on Plato. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not too good for democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it another script that has been? Uh, uh, rehashed or reenacted yeah. right. and played out. Yeah. Right. Uh, those questions hopefully will be answered in the days to come uh, as those APC lawmakers who have won through the courts uh, did not show up for plenary yesterday. Security agents arrest uh, Fulani leader Bodejo in Nasarawa for uh, putting together a vigilante group that I believe uh, is causing some sort of concern. I don't know if you've been tracking that story. But, yes, um, I, I, what, what do you make of it? I, I did. I saw it and um, I was concerned about uh, profiling mm. when they say a Fulani vigilante mm. uh, group. That's what some, uh, some papers he's, uh, he's have. He's uh, yeah. uh, uh, Kautal Hori. Uh, he's the president uh, of uh, Mieti Allah Kautal Hori, Bello Bodejo. Yes, yeah. the story is the crux of the matter is mm. that he set up a vigilante group, but solely for for Fulani. Mm. Now, where our fault that is, I mean, if we've been yearning for and calling for uh, community policing, uh, a kind of, I expect that uh, the pluralistic nature of a Nasrallah state mm. should have been taken into cognizance. Mm. When you have, uh, if you say, okay, all tribes there, can I have maybe you have president, your secretary, and PRO, all tribes. Then you now go meet somewhere. Can we think of this? Then you look for the blessing of, uh, of the governor, look for the blessing of the police, mm -hmm. so that it looks like, a, 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 what do we call them in uh, mm -hmm. Southwestern, uh, you know? If we can have something similar to that in the Southwest, fine. But when you single out one tribe, then another one singles out another tribe. Then another singles his own. Mm. Then where are your areas of operations? Yeah. Then there will be well, clashes. The, uh, so, uh, the deputy director uh, uh, of uh, the national secretary, I beg your pardon, uh, has said that uh, you know he was basically invited to answer some questions, but they are saying that it is not in connection with uh, you know the group, even though in some media reports it is in connection with forming that vigilante group. So uh, there's still some. Uh, gray areas that need to be ironed out in the in, in yes the and of the talking of invitation for to to iron out or to clear out some uh, some issues you could also see that the dss is saying it's not with them this agency right. is not but with now them. the military is saying that uh, they're now saying perhaps it's with the military because um they are the ones who well, the word is perhaps in other words i remember the days of uh, frank kokori mm. during the uh, abiola uh, abacha days mm. Uh, there was fuel scarcity, and uh, you could see that he virtually uh, played some key roles uh, where our government would want to go this way, he would sway unions the other side. So at the point, Franco Kokori disappeared. And uh, the daughter was saying, oh, the military came and arrested him and described everything the way they did. The military denied, Jerry Ghana denied he was Minister of Information, and Everyone was just saying, where is this labor leader? In the end, the man appeared. He just said, yeah, I also needed to cause uh, some confusion within mm -hmm. the system. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I, I think that the situation we have in Nasrallah 
is uh, more than this um, um, mm. little uh, drama. It's a serious thing. And like I said, if it is for the good of the Fulanis, it should be for the good of the Egon people, mm. good for the Gwandaras, good for everybody, uh, the Madas, everybody. I mean, let, uh, let us simply have uh, a stable Nasarawa well, mm. progress, mm. Nasara, be something mm. like that. Okay. So if we can um, have that, the better mm. for everybody. Well, uh, Tinubu has received the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is asking for your support uh, for G20 membership. And um, uh, we're learning more about that uh, particular visit. But what does a G20 membership actually mean for Nigeria? I mean, the African Union uh, just joined uh, the G20 uh, uh, group. And uh, there's one African country that, uh, you know, always gets that invitation. And that has always been South Africa. So... What do you think this membership, if eventually we get it, what would it mean for this country? Honestly, I mean, it's, it's like an elitist kind of a club mm. that you go fraternize, take very big flamboyant photographs, and thereafter return. Mm. I mean, let us begin to look at the benefits, even the cost benefits of I everything. I mean, G20 is... Um, I think it's responsible for, is it 82 or 83 or thereabout uh, percent of global trade? So it's not just elitist, it's uh, getting into the big boys club, isn't it? Uh, and that, that means That something. makes it elitist. My mm. brother, how but do we just something. go? Yes, it, it, it could mean something, mm. but honestly, we need to look at ourselves internally first. Mm. Which investor do you want to bring? Outside the Chinese that are ready to invest in a very hostile and uncertain environment. Outside the Chinese, where are the uh, Americans? Where are the Britons? Then if you're talking of Germany, Germany said, okay, they'll come into, uh, to, to do some uh, railway uh, businesses uh, with us here. Uh, and where are they? We are still waiting. Only the Chinese can take that risk and they can afford to also give us either inferior or, or very good uh, te technology. And that's why Ajaokuta has failed. Uh, I mean, Russia started all of this, abandoned it. The Indians came in. Where are they? They've gone. Now we've seen China coming. And what are they trying to do? They said they want to build what they call military hub in that area, military uh, hard, hardware in uh, Ajaokuta. So if Blinken comes and we are simply saying we want to go join uh, G20 uh, nations, if China has come, whoever is ready to come in here, please let's do business uh, 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 with them. Instead of all this... Uh, 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 aligning and uh, realigning and we, we are not seeing anything let us take our security seriously if we take security seriously and everywhere is, is, is safe i tell you we don't even need to 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 woo them to beg them they'll be the ones to come looking for land looking for all of this let us give security let's give incentives and avoid unnecessary taxation my brother mm -hmm. Local government is taxing you. You come into this office. Some people in a, in a, in a orange kind of T-shirts with face cap. They just brandishing ID cards. Hey, show us particulars. Mm -hmm. That's different from VIO. Different from road safety code. You are there. I was speaking with somebody who has a very big car shop in this place. I said, look, you just sit down. Some people will come. Oh, this uh, billboard. You have to pay for it. Okay, uh, Federal Inland Revenue is coming this way. Uh, Abuja is coming, the Grand Red. They are talking all sorts of taxes that are driving people away. And when they were using so much big generators, how much were they sp uh, spending to maintain generators? Because there's always no light. And when NEPA, or they are, even though their name has changed, when they do come, I mean, when there is no light, the bill they give you is, 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 will shake you. Then now look at, okay, how much do I have in this uh, sh uh, sh shopping mall? I mean, how, m how many people do I pay? And by the time you pay all these taxes, it's like you have uh, taxes. It's like you have opened this place just for purposes of paying taxes. It's, it's, it's not the best. And uh, so G20 or whatever name you will call it, I think we have to m make do. First, let us make our environment here safe for investment. Okay. Okay. We should. Mm. All right. Uh, more kidnappings and banditry. But let's take a look at um, uh, the front page of the Daily Independent. There are some stories uh, worthy uh, for a second look, uh, just to uh, give you a sense of uh, what other stories are being reported. Uh, on the front page of uh, the Daily Independent today, we see some uh, very interesting 
uh, news stories that I think uh, we should take a quick uh, look at, especially uh, with regards to some of these um, ideas around uh, the best way forward for the Nigerian economy. Um, but before we talk about the FAC allocations, uh, year-round elections putting pressure on INEC, according to the chairman, the national chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission. The February by-elections are here. They had an interaction with uh, the NSA, the Inspector General of Police, as well as the, uh, the Committee on Election Security. Your thoughts on what he's saying, plus when Nigerians say, listen, we're paying, we're breaking our backs, paying for all these elections, so I think it's only fair that we ask value for money. If we had done the election properly, maybe there wouldn't be by-elections, uh, especially in cases where it was because of a nullification of some, you know, polling units or voting centers and things like that, with a few exceptions of, you know, we have senators who have now had to become ministers and that position has been declared vacant. What are your thoughts about the pressure that INEC has to deal with, with all these off-season elections? I think the pressures also keep them on their toes. They are the ex experts. Mm -hmm. They are the election managers. Mm -hmm. So whatever pressure, what do you expect of a student? That, that they should be given uh, some they, very they, soft they, they landing. They always say practice makes progress. Exactly. So. And uh, in as much as we are seeing some of these gaps in, um, in the electoral process, I, I think that it is also time that we begin to experiment with them. If the National Assembly can quickly amend the Electoral Act, uh, then it, it will take care of some. Of, we use them as testing grounds. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's good omen. Mm -hmm. And if INEC 2 had also uh, done their elections correctly the way they ought to be done as laid down or uh, prescribed by, by law, I think we would not be going into uh, some of these things. And also politicians, I don't know. Why must, why must, like some people are talking about um, a, a Delta State. Mm. The sitting governor got how many, how many local governments? Now, the closest challenger got four local governments, yet you went to election part, uh, mm. petition. You mm. want elections upturned. You want things that happened to Hope Uzoduma, who, mm. who took fourth position. Supreme Court gave him. He became governor. And that is why today, I say, oh boy, where is the money we are going to give us? Take me to court. Let's go to court. You know, it's a very serious indictment on the judiciary. When everything you want to say, go to court. Let's meet in the court. In other words, look at what has happened in Plato. Look at what has also happened in Nasser State because the issue is let's go to court. Okay. Where some people feel they will get justice behind mm -hmm. this scene. All right. uh, we still have a very dysfunctional system that we need to sort out, especially uh, if you look at the very different layers when it comes to our democratic process, whether it's with the elections, whether it's with political parties, politicians, the judiciary itself, there are so many layers and dimensions to this uh, conundrum. But we're going to have to leave it here for now, Mr. Ben Sherman, as always. Thank you most kindly for the professional expertise and analysis. Thank uh, you really very much. Your... And I can see the Nigerian Bar Association being unbundled. Yeah. Another yeah. Wahala is coming. Yeah, well, Wahala uh, means trouble. I, 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 think, I think at the end of the day, we just want uh, a professional legal service, regardless of which uh, you know, association you decide to belong to. But lawyers still get to practice uh, either way. Thank you very much, Mr. Ben Sherman, Thanks for joining for us on me. Daybreak. Thanks for having okay. me. Thank you. This is where we wrap things up for today's edition of the program. Thank you most kindly for joining us. We do appreciate your time and company. Join us again tomorrow. We'll be back live at 8 a.m. exclusive as always on Trust TV. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Sports 360 Sports is coming up next at the top of the hour. Good morning.